and we'll get to the crack whores, and we'll get to the orgies. We'll get to all of that, which hey. a lot of you don't know about MLK. <laughs> Five things you don't know about MLK. Bet you didn't expect to hear MLK and crack whores. What? MLK Junior Day. Yeah, Junior. I always need to clarify Junior. junior. Yes. Because <laughs> some people are like, middle child? <laughs> could be the second. No. It could be the second. There was four, the I think. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. Could be like junior. George Foreman. They're all named George. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. let me be really clear about this. Uh, I like a lot of what MLK Junior had to say. Uh, I certainly think that his speech uh, has been pardon my language, shit on by today's left where he talked about the content of character. Mm -hmm. yeah. These were values that we would all align ourselves with. Yeah. However, MLK did become far more radical as life went on. And there's a lot that you don't know about MLK Jr. And I want to be clear, there are values, of course, that he espoused that we agree with. Yeah. But the man was flawed like a lot of men. But the issue here is if it's going to be a national holiday while you're tearing down statues of people who fought against slavery, like Abraham Lincoln, or even people who freed slaves upon their death, where we're talking about George Washington or Jefferson, then you can't have a statue and you can't have an MLK Jr. day because what I'm about to tell you is a lot worse. I didn't know a lot of this. Yeah. And yeah, everything. Well, uh, the, the wife of MLK actually gave his letters and all of his writings to somebody at Stanford, and he specifically formed MLK in a way that would be palatable. So he cut out all of the stuff that's yeah. Yeah. All negative, the rough edges. Right. all the rough edges. So that's why we have the, and he advocated for the MLK Day. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Well, here's the thing. Everything we're about everything. to share with you comes directly from congressional records archived newspapers, MLK's own speeches. And I know the FBI is not an organization that I trust. Okay, I want to be very clear. However, none of the, none of the evidence that we'll be uh, providing for you here uh, it has actually been refuted by anyone in the MLK camps. Yeah, they just don't like how they obtained it. Right. It was surveillance transcripts Buggy. that were reported by a guy named yeah. David Garrow. Um, but he also, uh, uh, this is the biographer. He obtained these transcripts from the FBI. He was the official biographer on uh, MLK. He won the 97 Pulitzer Prize. So this is a man who was very pro. Mm. Did I say? You said 90, 87. 87. Yeah. Um, and the FBI uh, surveillance audio will be released in 2027. I don't know why they picked uh, that year. I have no idea. A specific year? Later. You know. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, crap, it's getting closer. So um, <laughs> here's something that you probably know that uh, MLK, for example, let's start with this. Supported peaceful protest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is true. Sometimes. He also had some pretty, I guess you could say, unsavory opinions uh, about riots that I do think need to be considered because a lot of people don't know this part. We continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. We continue to affirm that there is another way. But at the same time, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must ga engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. I agree with everything that's thus far. Mm -hmm. I think America must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. But in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. Uh. What is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over Hate the last speech. few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. See, and that's the problem is the open-endedness to it because, yeah. well, what is justice? Well, right now people are saying, oh, injustice is there are too many Asians at uh, Stanford. <laughs> so let's burn down a Walgreens. Yeah. Oh, exactly. more specific you that. need to be a little more specific. And let me be clear, too, at another 1967 speech, and we'll get to the crack whores, and we'll get to the orgies, we'll get to all of that, which hey, a lot of you don't know about MLK. <laughs> Five things you don't know about MLK. Bet you didn't expect to hear MLK and crack whores. What? Today.
I have a dream of nine crack holes at a Motel 6. Nope. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think crack exists. You wouldn't go Motel 6. I am probably not. Was, just no. Motel just holes in general then. <laughs> <laughs> so a 67 speech, King said, urban riots are a special form of violence. They are not insurrections. Ah. Disagree. Good to know. Said the rioters are not seeking to seize territory to attain control of institutions, which today they are. That's their stated goal, Black right, Lives yeah. Matter. They are mainly intended to shock the white community. The looting enables the most enraged and deprived using his word here, Negro to take hold of consumer goods with the ease the white man does by using his purse. This goes on a lot. If you look at some of his statements regarding riots and regarding violent protest, yeah. it's worse than I thought. I thought he kind of both sides it. He actually more often encouraged violent protesting than he discouraged it, and that is probably disappointing to a lot of people. Yeah, he's, he's making excuses for people basically losing their minds. Look, I get it. There was so much injustice. I have no idea how I would feel, but I probably wouldn't then go and burn down or rob a local store yeah. owned by other black people in my community. Right. And thing. I would never justify it and say, well, it is just as easy as a white man using his purse. Well, first yeah. of all, men and purses, this was beginning of the... I'm talking hey, about hey, Europe, hey. Gerald A. Ah, it's not a European <laughs> man bag, Stephen. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems that he doesn't clarify or he's flip flops because there is another interview where he specifically says that riots are against the black community because right. then they the same thing that we've said before right. in 2020, it destroys their own community yeah. and it does the opposite of what you want it to do. And he says you you can you can kill a murderer, but you can't kill murder. Well, uh, Pops Sprouters here, those ri the Detroit yeah. riots, which you were alive for, that uh, that really hurt the white man right in his purse. <laughs> we didn't feel it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But yeah, he needs to, we whenever he says stuff like that, he should have yeah. combined it with what he said later in a different interview. Yeah. Is it, it hurts the black community to do this and then say they do this because that they're because they're being yeah. oppressed oppressed you know what must it's be condemned not just thing. as vigorously to, is the harming it. of your own community that's what yeah, makes exactly. it be condemned right. just as vigorously think yes. of the detroit riots yeah and then they blamed what white flight detroit riots like well first right. off that's not what happened second you burn down your own communities in detroit yeah. black people were harmed and you know who got the worst end of that stick was Mm -hmm. Black police officers. They had to go home in unmarked cars because they yep. were being picked off by snipers on rooftops. Right. There is, you cannot yep. find examples of riots, riots in the from the 1970s onward that were targeted specifically, let's say, against just white people, which would be racist, but yeah. at least would just make maybe sense. No, it ends up hurting people in their own mm -hmm. community, and that needs to be condemned just as vigorously. Oh, well, we don't find that writing. Maybe it's because you were too busy with number two. And we're talking about things that you may not have known about MLK. Uh, worked with communists. Yeah. Really? Very closely. And I don't mean that in the sort of sense where people are like, ah, pinko commie. I mean, one of his top advisors was a guy named Stanley Levison. Okay. And uh, he was a member of the Communist Party until 1956. And he secretly gave MLK Jr. Jr. $10,000 <laughs> just one year after meeting him. That's and, a lot uh, of thousands. Yeah. Adjusted to today's dollars, that'd be about $87,000. Wow. Mm, That's a mm -hmm. big donation. That's a lot more thousands than I thought. Seems like an odd number, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give Inflation. you 87,000. Can't you round this shit to 90? I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream to have a big purse. Yes. <laughs> All you Just white, like the one, man. white devils with your Gucci's and your Michael Kors. Chalk demons everywhere I go. <laughs> and your Louis Vittens. I have a dream. <laughs> So FBI <laughs> counteragent Carl Prussian, and again, this is from the biography, just to be clear. So I, I know that the FBI isn't always a reliable source, but right, they right, did right. tap, wiretap, which I think is a horrible thing. Yeah. yeah. However, we also have to acknowledge the facts and reality as it relates to MLK's life. You see a progression of him becoming more and more radical. Some people argue it's because of drug use. Some people argue it's just fame is corrosive to the yeah. human soul. But he wasn't the guy who a lot of people praise. Sort of like I've talked about this with Muhammad Ali. It's the flip yeah. side, where people with Muhammad Ali don't realize that Muhammad Ali, who was a draft dodger, who was a known racist, who was against intermarrying, against race mixing, mm -hmm. uh, later on in his life, actually moved out to the suburbs and not only supported Ronald Reagan, campaigned for white Mormon Orrin Hatch. Mm. Oh, wow. But no one talks about that with Muhammad Ali. People change. If you change the wrong way, you'll notice there's a yeah. span of Muhammad Ali's life where he really wasn't a celebrity. He wasn't given the same kind of shine. And then, of course, when he died, we go back to oh, when he was young, when he would say he was young and naive and ignorant. How about the time where, how about once he grew up and apologized 
for the race baiting and calling Joe Frazier yeah, a house yeah. Negro and an Uncle Tom. And he said, I shouldn't have done that and called Sonny Liston a big, ugly gorilla. This is what Muhammad Ali would do with people. He said, I was wrong, and I moved out to the suburbs because I didn't want to be in those communities anymore because I have children. Yeah, That's Malcolm important. X, same thing. Later in his life, he, he, was, he rethought his violence attack yeah. rhetoric. He's yeah. like, I don't think that was the right way to go. And being connected with the the Muslim church yeah who killed yeah. him the Muslim Brotherhood right but it, it yeah it's not good it, it doesn't give you what you want right? right so Darren how many how many white people looked at the uh, Detroit riots and were like oh you know what they're probably right yeah I, I totally understand it. how many mm. people from the other side were brought to their cause and like given a chance to see what was going on well they had to see it through binoculars well that's true <laughs> what about what about the riots in Los Angeles not the first time but the second time that they sure, yeah, I believe destroyed. they're burning down Indian Village there's a bunch of screaming gay men I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't bring people to your cause. No, of yeah. course People not. hate your cause because you're tearing down the city. Well, MLK yeah. became more... So it's the flip side. He became more radical, and so he's yeah. venerated. Whereas when Muhammad Ali became more reasonable, they just sort of ignored him for a while. So yeah. FBI counteragent Carl Prussian wrote in a sworn affidavit to Congress, I further swear and attest that Reverend, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was always set forth as the individual to whom communists should look and rally around in the communist struggle on the many racial issues. I hereby also state that Martin Luther King Jr. has either been a member of or wittingly has accepted support from over 60 communist fronts, individuals, and or organizations which give aid to or espouse communist causes. Number three, things that might surprise you about MLK. Uh, not only witnessed a rape, didn't do anything about it. Wow. 1964, MLK watched as his friend, a Baptist minister, uh, Logan, is it Curse or Kiersey? I don't know I how to pronounce it. Raped a woman at the Willard Hotel in D.C. A lot of you know this. A lot of people don't. Notes from David Garrow. Again, this is the biographer. And the FBI surveillance docs show, which will be released in 2027. Yep. The group met in his Curse's hotel room and discussed, w discussed which women among the parishioners would be suitable for natural or unnatural sex acts. When one of the women protested that she did not approve of this, the Baptist minister immediately and forcibly raped her. Quoted directly from the FBI notes, surveillance mm -hmm. notes, King looked on, laughed, and offered advice. That's unbelievable. And by the mm -hmm. way, just to be clear, the audio tapes will be released in yes. 2027. These notes right now, and this is what the author said, because he's taken all kinds of flack for it. Nobody is challenging the legitimacy of the claims. They're just at all. saying they bugged it. It was the biggest FBI abuse of power they've ever seen because they bugged him, and he didn't know. And they bugged everything. And then they started releasing things to try to get this factual information that they had into the right hand so they could smear King. That was it. Not that it was lies. Right. You yeah. can go to the National Archives right now. Anybody with an internet connection can go and look this up. It is public information. Well, we have, uh, we have the links available, Yep, too. and you have to deal with it. Lightworthcutter.com, all references available. I mean, offering advice on a rape is um, whew, almost shocking. I yeah, never, never knew say that. so. Yeah, and he had daughters, too. That, that's a horrible, yeah. horrible that's thing. That's a terrible thing. It's funny how they're, they're giving it 40 years from the date of the uh, article, 87, right? They figure he can shine for 40, and then we're going to bring facts out. Yeah. It's all going to be available in 2027. Well, if we're tearing down statues, there's a big MLK thing that we should probably go take a look at in probably, Washington. I don't, yeah. look, I, I, don't, not I don't know if it's as bad as Abe Lincoln, who fought against slavery. you got to tear that down. Well, but yeah, the yeah, man yeah, who yeah, was yeah. like, yeah. no, 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 uh, uh, get on, get up on, uh, turn her around, see? Well, it's not like Roosevelt, where he had the like in positions of power, a Native yeah. American and a black person Th with him. This guy had him and had her in positions of rape. Well, that's not power. Well, it's some say it's a crime of power. Well, it's a little well, bit. That's, yeah. It's not so much a crime of power, so much a crime that I want to have sex and she didn't. How do you make a <laughs> statue of that? Well, it no, requires no, no. a lot of iron, <laughs> a lot of smelting. <laughs> if you were to come alive today, skilled artisans. If you were to come alive today to to his dream, which is what people focus on, he would say, "We're here." This is it. It's exactly what I imagined. Well, no, we why were are here, you guys, and then complain? we passed it. Then no, we went back. he would say, yeah, exactly. In the 90s, yeah. we were here. Yeah. My, we my got dream, here in the 90s. My dream was never to play the victim card, card in perpetuity, and that's what, what we have today. Well, we also have the next one. So if he were alive today, I mean, he participated in massive orgies, which um, hey. he would have loved TikTok. <laughs> oh. Man knows how to party. <laughs> Touche. Man knows how to party. Just would have saying. loved the talk. <laughs> The following night, this is after, I believe, the rape in yeah. which he offered play-by-play -play <laughs> color commentary. <laughs> MLK and his friend participated in a sex orgy with about 12 people, approximately 12 people. How do you have an approximate wow. number? Yeah. If I'm at an orgy, it's hard to count. There's so I would have an exact count. count. It's like the grid yeah. system you, when you're doing crowd estimation. You just, say, <laughs> you just 
<laughs> five feet by five feet, That's and then right. just kind of guess. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do with twi- count them as one and a half twins? If they're Siamese, it's one. If they're separated, oh, we will count them as one and a half people. It's pretty musty in here. Yeah. <laughs> The smell must have been bad. You're right. When one woman shied away from engaging in an unnatural sex act, mm-hmm. uh, King and others discussed how to initiate her, and he told her the act would, quote, help her soul. Well, that's a clever... Wow. I don't think that's true. He also... No, no, it, it did happen, but it no, didn't I mean, help her soul. The advice, I don't <laughs> yeah. think, is true. I mean... I have... That might be incorrect. I have something that will soothe your soul. Is it the word of God? Not exactly. <laughs> Better have a drink first. (laughs) MLK also participated in another orgy in Las Vegas with a friend, a prostitute, and the gospel singer Clara Ward. It's Las Vegas. Why do we know about this? It's supposed to stay there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, because she sang about it. The gospel was like, oh, happy day. I had sex with MLK. He's like, shut up, bitch, shut up. (laughs) Garrett, you're right. The biggest point in all of this is that things don't actually stay in Vegas. The next day, he's given a sermon. And of course, as we all know as Christians, we are to keep our minds mouths silent shut as it relates to <laughs> secrets <laughs> or events that have happened in vegas we have solemnly sworn that it will stay in vegas right clara right bitch that's right <laughs> <laughs> my soul doesn't feel so no. I, I didn't promise no, <laughs> no money no. back now uh <laughs> he uh king and ward watched king's friend evan of course with Le- with uh larue gail larue La uh, LaRue told the FBI investigator that was the worst orgy I've ever gone through. Wait, wait, wait. How <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> There's a sliding orgy uh, scale. A question wow. here. <laughs> was that a one-star orgy rating? What yeah. is this, Uber? Yeah. What's the Yelp review Jeez. here? Yeah. I would never that, go back for another orgy there. Would not recommend. To experience, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's the <laughs> that's the last time I go to that orgy. Yeah. <laughs> there were whips and stuff. I, I'm not into uh, it. It's just no. too much. It was just too or It was just too orgy-ish. <laughs> There wasn't even good food. And here's the... (laughs) That's the strip club. They have a fantastic buffet (laughs) and a wonderful sneeze shield. Oh, gosh. (laughs) I tested it. Also, I don't know if you know this. uh, Surprise. Uh, MLK Jr. was a black man. Really? Yes, he was black. This what? is another little bit of, huh. a, of a swerve. Uh, just in case, you, well, because I know the videos are black and white. I thought he was right. gray. Yeah, well, black and white. So that's why I know it's tough. <laughs> He's gray. You know what's actually fascinating? If you go back and watch young uh, Joe Lewis, and sorry, Joe Lewis is here, not you. Young Joe Lewis, the fighter, yeah. he looks like a white guy. Oh. In some of them, the way they color correct it, because he'd be fighting um, uh, like Jersey Joe Walcott or something, and a black guy looks darker, and you just look at him, and he, you know, he had the hair kind of parted to the side. Yeah. You're like, where's Joe Ooh. Lewis? Behind that white man? <laughs> <laughs> are there, are there no, two Joe him. Lewises? Yeah. <laughs> this is not brought to you in Technicolor, but uh, he was black. <laughs> and uh, despite here's the thing. Despite all these little-known facts about MLK, I want to be very clear. This is about consistency. This yeah. is about if you're going to tear down statues because of something that you deem offensive because people lived an imperfect life, then you would have to apply it to someone who took part in rapes, to someone who was taking parts in orgies, to someone who was misleading about working with communists, right? This is something that we have to be consistent about. Now, I don't think that we can't actually continue to espouse the words yeah. that MLK espoused in his most famous speech where he was talking about the content of character. I think that there are values there that are worthwhile, that are worth pursuing. And as a matter of fact, I think today the Black Lives Matter community and the woke left community who enable them uh, would be well served to heed the words of his speeches as opposed to his imperfect life. But even when we're talking about his speeches, if to the uh, uh, Pops Crowder's points, if MLK Jr. were alive today and had to give a speech that would get thunderous applause from today's left, uh, it, would, it, would, it would have to be a very different speech. I have a dream that my four gender-neutral children will not live in a nation where they are judged by outdated norms like their character, but exclusively by the color of his or her or Z's skin. I have a dream today. <laughs> I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Fact checkers have determined this to be potentially harmful and misleading information. I have a dream that little black children and little white children will stand six feet apart at a pride parade to watch a man be ball-gagged and bullwhipped without fear of age propriety. (laughs) 
I have a dream that one day, even in the state of Florida, children of all colors and racial identities will cover their faces to learn critical race theory over Zoom while dissenting teachers are fired for things they said online six years ago and are taken out of context. This will be the day. This will be the day when all of science's children, yes, Yes, when all of science's children will be able to sing with new meaning. Oh, there ain't no other way, baby. I was born this way. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. So let Sheetham ring from the tent cities of Los Angeles. Uh huh. Let Sheetham ring from the safe spaces of Brooklyn. Let Sheetham ring from the tech firms of Silicon Valley. Yes, all right. Let Sheetham ring from the branches of Santa Monica. But not only that, when we let Sheetham ring from every drum circle at Oberlin and from every remaining Apple store in Portland, we will be able to speed up the day when all of God's pronouns POCs and bi POCs, Latinx persons and Chicon X, yeah, the asexual and the aromantic, allosexual and the autosexual, queers and the gender queers, the LGBTQ, the LGBTQIA, the LGBTQIA plus, the LGBTQIA plus dollar sign eggplant emoji, the Neptunic and the Trixic. The sometimes questioning and the two-spirited, yes. We'll be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old spiritual, stay home, yes, stay safe. Thanks, science almighty, stay home, stay safe. Spirit fingers, please. I don't know which one I like more. (laughs) Powerful, wow. Impact. (laughs) Impact. <laughs> Spirit fingers. <laughs> too soon? Spirit Comment fingers. below. <laughs> Comment below if that's too soon. No. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube right now, if you if you want to see more uh, of oh. that, smash the like button right now. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.